Hi students, today I'm going to be speaking to you about cultural forms in the Caribbean. My name is Tisha Smith Guthrie and I hope that you will enjoy this journey with me. So first, before we go into any cultural forms, we have to understand the definition of what cultural form is. So that can be defined as aesthetic practice that can be acquired from or identified with a particular community or culture within the Caribbean. These cultural forms are manifestations of culture that can be observed. And the people who practice them embody through expression, through affirmation, and through communication with one another. These practices can be seen through rituals, festivals, celebrations, dance, other movement, games, and language. Examples would be ballet dance, landship in Barbados, uh, wake, nine night, and many other cultural forms that you'll be studying. So the first cultural form we're gonna be looking at today is Trinidad Carnival. It is an annual event that happens on Monday and Tuesday, right before Ash Wednesday, and happens the week prior to Lent. Many people from all over the world come to participate to enjoy the costume and the exuberant celebration. So in looking at the various elements within Trinidad Carnival, we're gonna look at traditional carnival versus contemporary carnival or pretty mass. Traditional carnival is a community-based, home-based practice and incorporates music such as calypso, rapso, steel pan, and tambu bamboo, whereas contemporary carnival incorporates soca. So traditional carnival focuses on specific portrayals or characters where the voice is very important. So for example, you look at Baby Doll, um, who is represented usually sometimes a man, is dressed up as a woman and uses a high-pitched voice. So that is, is vocal, but not all of the characters are vocal characters, such as the Moko Jambi or Jab Jab. So with the contemporary carnival, um, you will see that with Pretty Mass, it's more about the aesthetic of the female body. Um, there's not much vocal um, transaction happening there, but there's a lot of movement and dance. And in the costume, you'll see that there's a front line and there's a back line section. So the front line is very elaborate as the back line has certain elements that will take from the front line costume. And it's said that the front line costume kind of identifies a position status or where they are in society. So in terms of people and roles that are played within Carnival, Traditionally, the masquerader would be the creator and designer, where with Pretty Mass, um, it has introduced a creative designer and their artisans, so people who are a part of the creative process. So in looking now at the traditional characters, and we're looking at the symbolic relevance. Um, is it spiritual? Is it ritualistic? And I would say that it is. Um, if you look at the Blue Devil, for instance, you'll see that they portray a specific character and there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. Um, some people would even say that there is this almost trans-like or out-of-body experience that happens um, where they sometimes have no idea how they ended up where they ended up. And so it's very powerful. Um, and they sometimes even also pray for protection just for their safety. And with contemporary carnival, even though there's no specific character portrayed, you kind of portray yourself unless you prefer to portray something else. Um, there is also that spiritual, emotional connection as well. And in saying that, in looking at specific characters such as Jab Jab, they go through intense training. And if they're not able to be spiritually um, or mentally prepared, then they're not able to practice. So there's a lot of preparation that goes into these characters prior to them, to their performance. Another um, symbolic relevance would be looking at Juve. That is also a spiritual symbolism because that is the celebration of the ancestors and celebration of emancipation. Also in looking at Moko Jambi, um, Moko meaning God, African God or diviner. And it's said that 
um, Moko traveled across the seas to the Caribbean in order to protect his people. So you see the, the spiritual significance in these characters. So that's just an example that you can also apply to the other cultural forms as well as the other characters within traditional carnival. In looking at the economy, carnival plays a crucial part. Um, it, does bring in a lot of money for Trinidad and Tobago, as well as if you look at the artists, the creators, that is their profession, it is their bread and butter. So without it, um, as you can see right now with the impact of COVID-19, you can just understand how difficult this will be for those who participate in this practice, in this cultural form. And in looking at the impact on society and on the individual, it brings a lot of people together. As we had said before, it attracts a lot of people internationally. Um, it is also a time to decompress. So if you're working that everyday eight hour job that you don't like, it is a time for people to come together, have Monday and Tuesday to express themselves, be creative, and just enjoy the carnival. So in looking at the Midnight Robber, one of the traditional characters in Carnival, it is known as one of the most beloved characters in traditional Carnival. His costume and his speech are very distinctive and his robber talk, as they call it, is extravagant and self-centered and very boastful. He brags about his great ancestry and exploits his strengths and fearlessness and invincibility. He's like a storyteller and his speech patterns and vocabulary imitate his former master. Painted on his cape is a skull and crossbones and with it comes a nickname that is given to him by another. He also wears a huge black broad brimmed fringe hat with a coffin on it. In his hand, he carries a weapon, either a dagger, sword or gun. There is also a money box in the shape of a coffin, which he also carries, and a whistle which he blows to punctuate his tales of heroism. Next, we're going to touch landship in Barbados. This is an old, or one of the oldest, cultural farms in Barbados that is indigenous to the island. It was established in 1863, and became more pronounced in 1920s. So this cultural form is influenced by British naval practices and African practices. And this can be seen in the costumes that are worn, the navy um, outfit. And the performance is also accompanied by the tap band. Landship is also known to have an association that started after emancipation in order to help those who were enslaved on the plantations to be socially and financially stable because there was no pension plan or savings. So the landship gave them that opportunity to be able to be socially stable. So it kind of acted like a susu, like a savings scheme where everybody put money in to a pile, so to speak, and then each person takes turns um, retrieving that money. So that was really helpful in, within the community. So landship isn't known for props, but there is the ship that is represented by the people who are performing, as well as the engine, which is represented by the top band who accompanies the performers on the ship. At times, when you see landship, you will see the maypole. And with the maypole, the landship, the performance of the landship and the top band, they're integrated to create this one cultural form. So in terms of music and sound, you have the live band, which is the top band that accompanies the ship, as well as the sound of the drill master, who it's a kind of a call and response, who tell the people on the ship, what moves or maneuvers to, to do. So in looking at the uniforms, it tells us the position or the hierarchy of the member on the ship. There are very distinguishing factors. So you have the juniors who wear blue or blue and white. You have the older members who wear white and black. And you also have those who signify leadership who wear gold bands or epaulets. And this indicate the captain who is also well decorated. 
So in looking at the movement, the movement is very synchronized. The drill master calls out these formations and the members are to respond. It is said that the movement is a reenactment of the enslaved journey through the Middle Passage, while others say it reflects the movement of the ship. So for example, rough seas, man overboard, docking or scrubbing the deck. In looking at the impact on community and society, it is a time of bringing people together. It also helps in taking people out of poverty and homelessness. And it's a form of expression. People also have an opportunity to gather and rehearse and prepare together before performing. Next, we're gonna look at wake or nine night in Jamaica. Funerals don't happen right away. Sometimes it takes almost a month to allow the families to come back to Jamaica and be a part of this wake. It is also believed that the spirit takes nine nights before it can depart the body. So it's a very distinct um, process or practice, nine night that is, um, of the burial and mourning process. So nine night involves a lot of music, and dancing, lots of drinking, lots of food. It is a very high energy celebration and there's no crying, but yet joy and celebration of life for the person who has passed. In some cases, you will notice people chant or do a song about the person who has passed. And it's almost like a trans-like or out-of-body experience for those as the music continues to play and the movement. And this will carry on through the next day, the day of the funeral. In some neighborhoods, you will see the streets and the alleyways are blocked off in order to practice this cultural form. It is a mourning period where huge amount of people come and partake and pay their respects. In looking at the traditional wake or traditional night night to the contemporary one, there is quite a shift or disapproval because some people feel like it's an excuse to put on a party and it because it is a huge event. It is suggested that the idea of the wake or nine night in Jamaica has shifted from consoling family members to adding financial burden because the family is who prepares and also provides all the food and the alcohol. Today, wake is also a way to display a position in, in society, even when you cannot afford. And when you look at some of the burial grounds, you'll see that they are almost these mansion-like miniature replicas of homes of the person who has passed to just kind of distinguish their position in society. I hope this information was helpful and will help you to be able to apply and deconstruct. I wish you all the best.